Nothing ERA has launched in India for 8,000 rupees. How do they sound? Are they any better than the competition or are they just overpriced? Let me tell you all about this. Let's get started. I know what you're thinking. Why yellow? Well, nothing wanted to give this new lineup a more playful look, so that's why. But they do come in standard black and white color as well. Thank God. Apart from the color, the ear A looks the same as the ear 2. They weigh 4.8 grams each and fit very well on the ears with these silicone tips. They do pass the head shake test as well. Plus, you get in-ear detection, pinch controls work well, and you can configure them in the Nothing X app to change volume, play pause tracks, ANC controls, and more. You can also set a widget on the home screen using the Nothing X app, which is very useful. Other TWS brands, please take a note of this. Now the case on ear A is completely different than the case on ear 2. It's slimmer and rectangular and kind of looks like a miniature Tiffin box. The pairing button is now on the inside and the hinge opens well, but the lid still moves a bit when the TWS is closed, just like the previous Nothing earbuds. Hope nothing fixes that. The case is IPX2 rated while the buds have an IP54 rating. On the connectivity front, the buds come with Bluetooth 5.3, dual connection, both Google Fast Pair and Microsoft of Swift pair support. I also found the range to be pretty good and the music played well as I moved between rooms. In low lag mode, the latency is 120 milliseconds, which is not the best in the segment. Now let's talk about the sound quality. The ear A comes with 11mm drivers and high-res LX support. Now if you remember, the Nothing Gear 2 had LHDC support and the reason they switched to LDAC is that it has slightly better sample rate and bit rate, which ultimately results in more clear and crisp audio. Not everyone will notice this, but it's a move in the right direction. Specs aside, the sound signature of these earbuds are set to very bass heavy by default. When I first set it up, the bass enhance option was set to level 3 and also the EQ was at more bass. I turned off the bass enhance and set the EQ to balance and still I found the buds to be bass heavy. Apart from that, the vocals are very clear and crisp even in high pitch. That's really good. So if you play songs like The Surge by NF, the high bass is very much noticeable, which matches with the song and also the treble is very well handled, which even the Nothing Gear to struggle with. But when you listen to lighter songs, songs like the Masakali or the background score from Schindler's List, the bass unnecessarily kicks in which could be slightly unpleasant. Other than that, the sound stage is really good and even with comparatively smaller 11mm drivers, the bass is really good and it doesn't crush the treble. But I also compared these with other earbuds from Oppo, Realme and OnePlus. Here is the sound quality ranking for all of these earphones and yeah. Only the Oppo Enco Air 3 Pro beat the Ear A in terms of overall sound quality. That's because Oppo just handles the bass better in my opinion. On top of that, Oppo also brings additional features such as personalized sound and even spatial audio which nothing Ear A lacks. By the way, do note that you don't get advanced EQ or personalized sound profile on the Ear A that was present in Ear 2 which is a bit sad. Now, if you're thinking about the mic quality, well, the Ear A comes with 3 mics and the mic quality is actually very good. I took a lot of calls with these and the mics cut down on the background noise pretty well and my voice was clearly audible to the other person. The Enco Air 3 Pro, the Real Buds Air 5 Pro and the OnePlus Buds 3 also have decent mics but they are not as good as the Ear A. OnePlus Buds Pro 2R does perform better in mic quality but it's nowhere close to Ear A in terms of sound quality so there's that. When it comes to ANC, Ear A offers noise cancellation up to 45 decibels. On paper, it's not very impressive but in reality, it's actually the best. I tested them in the metro and even wore them out in traffic and the vehicle noises were completely cut off. And even indoors, it does a pretty good job. Even the transparency mode works well and does a good job of enhancing human voices while keeping the background noise down. Lastly, the Ear A comes with a 500mAh battery inside the case and a 46mAh battery within the earbuds. This isn't the largest battery in the price range. And on paper, the battery life is supposed to be around 24.5 hours with the case with ANC turned on and 42.5 hours with ANC turned off. In my testing with ANC turned off, the earphones lasted for 7.5 to 8 hours on a single charge and 10 minutes of charge can give you 10 hours of playback, which is good. Look, the Nothing Ear A get a lot of things right. The sound quality is really good, you get LDAC support, best ANC in the price range and good mic quality. Yeah, it's bass heavy, but that's what most people prefer. And the design of the case is subjective for sure. But overall, these are a good pair of earphones. But they are 8,000 rupees and that is a lot of money. Honestly, I was expecting them to be priced around 5,000 or 6,000 and at that price, they would have been an easy choice. Plus, there's this Oppo Enco Air 3 Pro which is priced at around 5,000 rupees but it brings better sound quality with a little bit of compromise on ANC and the mic quality. Plus, there's this Oppo Enco Air 3 Pro which you have to throw. Voice played by... No. Sorry. <laughs>